I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. We begin with the stunning headline that America woke up to. U.S. Special Forces in Syria taking down the ruthless leader of ISIS. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi founded the Islamic State and launched a global campaign of jihad. He was responsible for gruesome executions, including beheadings. The mission to get him was actually named after Kayla Mueller, an aid worker kidnapped and killed by ISIS. The operation took place in the dead of night in Syria and was monitored, as you can see here, in the White House Situation Room, the president right there. President Trump coming before cameras this morning in a rare Sunday address, calling it a great victory for America. The raid was also a strategic and political victory for the president. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz takes us inside the raid. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the world's most wanted and brutal terrorist, dead after a daring raid by the elite U.S. Delta Force. He was the founder and leader of ISIS, the most ruthless and violent terror organization anywhere in the world. 5 p.m. Saturday night, President Trump, flanked by Vice President Pence, National Security Advisor O'Brien, and Defense Secretary Esper, gathering in the Situation Room with military brass, including the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, all watching a live, step-by-step -step feed of the mission. We had absolutely perfect, as though you were watching a movie. Eight Chinook helicopters took off on the secret mission from a Kurdish-controlled area in Iraq, flying low and taking on gunfire before landing in northern Syria. Once on the ground, the special operations team blowing holes in the side of Baghdadi's hideout, fearing the front door was booby-trapped. Baghdadi fled into an underground tunnel with three children. The president today speaking of the mission in stark detail. He died after running into a dead-end tunnel, whimpering and crying and screaming all the way. But before the special operations team could get to him, Baghdadi detonated a suicide vest he was wearing. The three children killed alongside him. His body was mutilated by the blast. The tunnel had caved in on it in addition. But test results gave totally positive identification. The Delta Force was on the ground for roughly two hours in a firefight with Baghdadi's men, killing two of his wives, who were also wearing suicide vests, although they did not detonate. At 7.15 p.m., the call came into the Situation Room from those on the ground, saying 100 percent confirmation, jackpot, over. We took highly sensitive material and information from the raid, much having to do with ISIS, origins, future plans, things that we very much want. At one point, the president comparing it to the killing of Osama bin Laden. This is the biggest there is. This is uh, the worst ever. Uh, Osama bin Laden was very big, but Osama bin Laden became big with the World Trade Center. This is a man who built a whole, uh, as he would like to call it, a country. 
Baghdadi had been radicalized while imprisoned in Iraq in 2004. Baghdadi rose to international prominence in 2014 after declaring himself head of the caliphate, inspiring barbaric acts of terror, including setting people on fire and beheading shown on social media. Among his thousands of victims, Americans James Foley, Stephen Sotloff, Peter Kassig and Kayla Mueller, who he repeatedly raped before she was killed. Those men and women that put their lives on the line, we owe them our sincere thanks. The mission was named in Kayla's honor, bringing an end to Baghdadi's ruthless reign. He will never again harm another innocent man, woman, or child. He died like a dog. He died like a coward. The world is now a much safer place. All right, Martha joins us now live. And Martha, we know this raid had been in the works for weeks, but you have some new reporting tonight on the break the CIA got in finding him. Yeah, Tom, a U.S. official tells ABC that the break came after the arrest and interrogation of one of Baghdadi's wives and a courier. The information they provided was one of the keys in a long trail that eventually led them to Baghdadi's hideout after a lot of hard work by the CIA and Kurdish partners. President Trump, it appears, awaiting for the room to settle before he Last begins Last night, the United States brought the world's number one terrorist leader to justice. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is dead. He was the founder and leader of ISIS, the most ruthless and violent terror organization anywhere in the world. The United States has been searching for Baghdadi for many years. Capturing or killing Baghdadi has been the top national security priority of my administration. U.S. Special Operations Forces executed a dangerous and daring nighttime raid in northwestern Syria and accomplished their mission in grand style. The U.S. personnel were incredible. I got to watch much of it. No personnel were lost in the operation, while a large number of Baghdadi's fighters and companions were killed with him. He died after running into a dead-end tunnel, whimpering and crying and screaming all the way. The compound had been cleared by this time, with people either surrendering or being shot and killed. Eleven young children were moved out of the house and are uninjured. The only ones remaining were Baghdadi in the tunnel, and he had dragged three of his young children with him. They were led to certain death. He reached the end of the tunnel as our dogs chased him down. He ignited his vest, killing himself and the three children. His body was mutilated by the blast. The tunnel had caved in on it, in addition. But test results gave certain immediate and totally positive identification. It was him. The thug who tried so hard to intimidate others spent his last moments in utter fear in total panic and dread, terrified of the American forces bearing down on him. We were in the compound for approximately two hours, and after the mission was accomplished, we took highly sensitive material and information from the raid, much having to do with ISIS, origins, future plans, things that we very much want. Baghdadi's demise demonstrates America's relentless pursuit of terrorist leaders and our commitment to the enduring and total defeat of ISIS and other terrorist organizations. A surprising sight in northern Syria today, U.S. troops in armored vehicles driving into the country. 
Just days after President Trump announced all U.S. troops would leave northern Syria, a U.S. military convoy drove from Iraq toward Deir ez-Zor Saturday, carrying the first U.S. troops assigned to a new mission, protecting oil fields. U.S. military officials stressing the mission is to keep the oil from falling into ISIS hands, denying them that revenue source. After telling the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces they were leaving Syria, the U.S. will now partner with them on the new mission to protect the oil. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Now to the homecoming party that turned deadly in Texas. Hundreds celebrating near the Commerce Campus of Texas A&M when a gunman showed up firing into the crowd, killing two people, injuring a dozen more, then getting away. Tonight, police are asking for help in finding the killer. ABC's Marcus Moore is on the scene in Greenville, Texas. Tonight, an urgent manhunt underway in Texas. Authorities say a single shooter stormed into a packed party to celebrate the Texas A&M Commerce homecoming, killing two and injuring a dozen others. The first shots ringing out just after midnight. We're in an east, multiple units. I've got hundreds of people. About 750 people, mostly in their late teens and early 20s, were at the party, not affiliated with the university, when authorities say the shooter entered through the back door. It was complete chaos as people fled for safety and deputies attempted to locate the shooter. Three officers already on the scene when the gunfire began, responding to parking complaints. Some of the injured cut by glass trying to escape. We breaking glass out the window trying to get out. Authorities say some witnesses have not helped in the investigation. Tonight they are pleading with parents to get their kids to come forward. It appalls me that uh, as many folks that were there have not been able to give us a better description of this uh, shooter. I really beg them to, uh, to get their children to give us information about this shooter. We need to get him off the street as soon as possible. And Tom, officials here say that the shooter likely targeted his first victim and then fired randomly after that, and that this crowded party gave him the perfect opportunity to carry out his deadly goal. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962 Engel vs. Vital, the removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court, 1963, Abington School District v. Shump, the removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court, 1973, Roe vs. Wade, legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Since then, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor, the Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act, Doma stated, that one man should be married to one woman. Doma is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2015, Overfell v. Hodges, the Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. 
The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Mother has died after she was hit by a car near a South Jer Jersey grocery store parking lot. The driver still hasn't been arrested. Eyewitness News reporter Shantae Lance is live in Gloucester Township with new details about the victim. Shantae. And Joe, we now know the name of that woman who was killed here. Her family has identified her as 50-year-old Patricia Mills. She uh, was a mother and grandmother from the Linden Wald section of Gloucester Township. Mills leaves behind three sons. The deadly hit and run happened yesterday evening around 7.30 on the 2000 block of College Drive in Gloucester Township. Police arrived and found Mills on the ground and unresponsive. The driver fled the scene, but police later found the abandoned vehicle. The victim's son tells Eyewitness News that Mills had left urgent care and was crossing the street to go to ShopRite to fill her prescription when she was struck. Residents say this is a dangerous road to cross. They want a crosswalk and stop signs added. We spoke with one woman who says she herself was struck while crossing that same section of the street. I just feel really bad for the family, I really do, because I can really sympathize with their feelings about this particular spot. It, it makes me sad. It really does. And at this point, that driver, any message to that driver? <sighs> he needs to come forth and get it straightened out because he's going to have to live with himself. That's all I got. Very upsetting. Very upsetting. And it's a little dark out here right now, but there's a pink balloon that hangs near the spot where that woman was killed. The driver has not yet come forward. The family of that victim says they have one wish. It's for that person to do so. When someone knowingly hits another human being, causing great bodily harm, and keeps driving and not rendering any aid, the love of many has truly grown cold. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24 verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Luke 21, 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ his nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Protests have returned to the streets of Lebanon in what is now the 10th day of demonstrations. 
Despite the army's attempts to unblock roads and open up the main arteries of Beirut, crowds flooded back to the streets, blocking roads with barriers, sit-ins and mass gatherings. According to locals, some protests were even met with violence. We demand an investigation into every soldier who fired at those poor people. These people are poor. They are hungry. We are going hungry. People are dying. We can't handle it anymore. We demand a transparent investigation with the head of the army. The protests are against what the protesters call a political class that is corrupt and mismanages state finances. They accuse this political class of pushing the country towards economic collapse. The streets are the only pressure card for the people. We won't leave the streets until our demands are met. People will decrease in numbers, then increase. It's not easy. It's not easy at all for the revolution to succeed in Lebanon. Let's be realistic. It's not easy at all. It's very hard. Despite the government announcing an emergency reform package, the protests have continued. There was even a protest in solidarity of the cause outside the Lebanese embassy in London. The sound of stun grenades reverberated around Tahrir Square in Baghdad on Friday. Dozens of protesters were overcome by clouds of tear gas. They chanted, free Baghdad, corrupt officials out. From Iraq's capital to the southern city of Karbala, Iraqis demanded the resignation of Prime Minister Adil Abdel Mahdi and his government. They are not men of state. That's all. They cannot do anything. They cannot manage a, little, a very little school. Not this big country. With this. The nationwide protests were on the first anniversary of Mahdi taking office. They're also a continuation of protests which began at the beginning of the month that have killed 149 civilians and eight members of the security forces. The government acknowledges excessive force was used. They call it a democracy, but the hands they use to wield this democracy are dictators. When they kill their people with snipers, it's not democracy. In addition to promising to punish those responsible for killing protesters, Mehdi announced that he and other government leaders will cut their salaries by half and divert the money to a fund to help the poor. He's also vowing to reshuffle the government next week, prioritizing qualifications before party or sect. For years we heard about reforms. It's just a sleeping pill to calm the people. All of us are rejecting this corrupt government. Protesters are primarily young men, desperate for jobs they can't find, in a country where the gap between rich and poor only seems to grow. I am jobless. I have 24 cents. Let all the television stations see me. This is all I have. Protesters say they want to live in an independent Iraq, not one that's a puppet of the United States and Iran. The office of an Iranian-backed armed group was torched in the southern city of Samawa. The prime minister says if the government resigns now, chaos will follow. Protesters remain unmoved. They say the solution is for a new government to take over. Psalm 917. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Now to the other major headline tonight, the governor of California declaring a statewide emergency as those potentially historic winds fuel multiple wildfires. One of the newest erupting right there in Vallejo, north of San Francisco, burning up a hill threatening the homes you see, and families forced to evacuate with fire on both sides of the road. Homes and businesses have already been lost as firefighters battle to save the rest. ABC's Will Reeve tonight on the scene. Tonight, a statewide emergency in California and two new fires igniting near the Carquinez Bridge northeast of San Francisco. Those homes are very much in danger right now. Residents with hoses defending their homes as crews rush in to fight the Glen Cove fire. Our Rob Marciano at the Sky Fire. Look how low he got. This is precision. These shoppers have been coming in every five minutes. They do not want this fire to cross I-80. But the Glen Cove fire did. Drivers surrounded by blinding smoke enveloping the roadway. 80, uh, just past the toll plaza here, uh, is closed and they're turning traffic around. Two firefighters injured battling the blaze. This amid potentially historic fire weather conditions to the north. So they're uh, working hard to defend this structure. You can see the propane tanks already venting. 
in Sonoma County, winds gusting above 90 miles per hour, turbocharging the Kincaid fires spread through wine country. More than 3,000 firefighters battling the 30,000 acre blaze. With the winds picking up, the flames are encroaching on this vineyard, the fire snaking all the way up the property. In Healdsburg, this winery reduced to rubble. Patients evacuated from this Santa Rosa hospital. Overnight, this house catching fire as the sun rises, it is completely engulfed. The structure is crumbling. By daybreak, some 180,000 people ordered to evacuate the county. Traffic jamming Highway 101. Tonight, the state's governor says they are deploying every resource available to fight fires. These critical conditions also threatening some 8 million people in Southern California as the work week begins. And Will Reeve joins us now live from a neighborhood firefighters were actually able to save. And Will, I want to talk about some of the power now because power has already been cut off to nearly 1 million customers and there are warnings of even more cuts in the week ahead. Yeah, Tom, that power is cut to prevent lines from sparking or anything else that might cause a fire. Here in the neighborhood in the town of Windsor, firefighters packing up, the smoke hanging low and thick and pungent. On the front lines, reports of firefighters battling hurricane force winds, major threats to neighborhoods like this one and the whole region. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.